I'm Glenn McGuinness and this is Outburst. This week, we honour Canada's men and women in uniform. We honour them as much as we possibly can. The country we have today, the freedoms. The times that they went through were incredibly difficult and tough. Everything you see around us is pretty much the legacy of the Canadian military. For many Canadians, November 11th is a time of reflection, no matter where you may be. The sacrifices made by our men and women in uniform has given us the freedoms we enjoy today. So we set out across the country with this question. What is the legacy of Canada's men and women in uniform? So personally, I feel that I'm very proud to be Canadian because they fought for, my, for the freedoms that I enjoy today. And they also are good good citizens of the world because they've helped so many other people during uh, war times. So I'm proud and I'm uh, honoured that uh, they fought for my freedoms that I enjoy today as a Canadian. Look at the country that we live in. Look at the, the privileges we're granted. I mean, we, we owe all of that to the young men that went to serve and, and fought for, for our freedom. So, I mean, everything you see around us is pretty much the legacy of the Canadian military. Well, it's all the freedom that we have here, and it's just there are heroes at the end, and it's uh, they, they fought for what we live in right now, and the maybe the education we have, uh, everything that our rights, our charters, everything. So uh, yeah, I would say our freedom. Okay, you? Yes, honestly, along those lines, I think it, it represents a big symbol symbol of uh, Canada's history and how much they fought for, so in, in order for us to get this freedom. Well, I mean, I think their their legacy is the fact that, you know, we can continue to be, you know, be free walking around and we can question the fact that we're even debating the topic of Remembrance Day and how we should celebrate it shows that the fact that we are an open and free society that allow to have intellectual discussions on these things. And I think that's something that's beautiful and, and will be continued from generation to generation. Excellent, superb, far above anything that, that this world understands I'm fiercely proud of them and proud of Canada and what we've done in the past. Their legacy, I just think it stands for, you know, support and honor of the country, you know, giving, uh, potentially giving your own life to, you know, let others live and in freedom. Well, put, keep the country together and they do a good job and we just have to support them, I guess. <laughs> freedom to do what we're doing right now. You can be asking me questions on the street. I can be standing waterside uh, talking to a microphone into a camera. That's, uh, that's why we paid for the freedoms that we have. I think protection in general. I think that's a really important element to be, to be protected, to have that, those forces in play so that uh, we can rely on them, definitely. The country we have today, the freedoms, and that people can decide what they want to be and have a good life? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, we depend on them to protect us. We depend on them to make sure that our service is delivered properly, that safety uh, and prosperity of Canada is uh, adhered to. So I think that uh, we should have more respect. As, unfortunately, in the latest time I've noticed that there has been a lot of backlash against people in uniform, even though they haven't done anything wrong. It's just a, the general uh, international kind of atmosphere that's happening against men and women in uniform but I think we should remember that they are doing an important job and sacrificing themselves every day be it COVID today or be it uh, you know in the front lines to 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 protect Canada in the, uh, abroad or here locally and like things that veterans did back in the day like World War One and like uh, like you couldn't ask people to do that nowadays I think it's just like helping like for me, it's what I learned in school, and it's like how they helped other people uh, when they needed it. Uh, not uh, they're more of a helping hand than anything else. Uh, that's how I see it. I mean, they're kind of respected historically or institutionally because of you know World War One and the veterans who served. Um, I think that also on the topic of mental health, we could also pay a lot more attention to the kind of like PTSD and other issues that um, veterans struggle with. I feel like that should be more at the forefront of the discussion. They are remembered, you know, incredibly highly because they the times that they went through were incredibly difficult and tough and you know, it's admirable that they, they were able to do what they did in such difficult times and and I don't think that uh, 
it's able it's I don't think I can comprehend exactly how they went through it but just to be able to um, pay respects and, and to acknowledge the fact that they did something in such difficult times is, is important. Every year on November 11th, normally thousands of Canadians gather here at the National War Memorial in Ottawa to remember our fallen soldiers. However, this year will be different. COVID-19 will alter where and even how we choose to remember. So we took this question to Canadians. How will COVID-19 change how you mark Remembrance Day? You know what, thank you for asking that question because I, I don't think I've given Remembrance Day enough pause or enough honor in the past and being a young person, maybe I feel a little bit removed from it. Um, so I'll think about that this year and maybe, yeah, I'll think about that this year, thank you. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're not gonna be attending any cenotaphs or anything like that. So it's gonna again be a virtual thing. Uh, certainly feel bad for the, you know, for the old soldiers that are still around that, you know, sort of get a lot of uh, comfort out of people showing up in, in large numbers and that's just not gonna happen this year. There's not going to be any big congregations <laughs> anywhere for that. Um, but I think that it's a good time just to reflect on, you know, everything that has happened and even though we have to be isolated, you can still remember those people with your close family. Um, so, I mean, it might be a little different because I know that sometimes there's ceremonies places for Remembrance Day, so maybe there won't be that. But there's always, thankfully, the internet and TV where you can see stuff broadcasted. Um, we've always gone out to uh, one of the cenotaphs for the Remembrance Day ceremony. So this year, uh, it's going to be more difficult. Um, uh, we'll probably have to watch something online, which uh, we will probably do. Uh, and I think that's harder because it, it was always good to be out uh, with people and then to lay your poppy on the cenotaph at the end of the service was always very memorable. And um, uh, having had family who have served through both world wars, um, it's hard not to be out there giving them the honour that is their, their due. So, but we don't have a choice. Well, I think in the schools they'll still remember it, remember the you know the vets. But I think that um, the parades and honoring them because they always have things for them around Remembrance Day, and, and we can't do that this year. The ones I really feel sorry for are the veterans, because they're the ones that we go out to celebrate, and they come out, and that's the one time of the year that we can end up showing our appreciations. And unfortunately, those are the ones that are at risk the most right now, or the elderly. And to tell you the truth, I don't want to be going up and shaking a 95-year-old man's hand and feeling fear. I don't think it'll change much. Uh, I will be wearing a poppy and, uh, and uh, we'll probably won't have an opportunity to go to any of the vigils, but uh, nonetheless, it won't change anything for me personally. I think we all should remember whether there's restrictions or not. That's something that should be remembered no matter what time you live in, what the people did for us before. So I think, you know, you should just celebrate it. Maybe not big gatherings, of course, but still it should be well known that this is the day and people should remember it no matter what. Well, definitely I will do my part and talk to my colleagues that were in the military. Uh, and we, we have events at work, but of course I'll talk to people mostly remotely. I'll be using, uh, I'll call them uh, and talk to them, but not really meet with them anymore and not have that pint of beer with my colleagues in the military. So that will be a little bit different, but I think uh, there won't be any, I believe, no meetings and parades and things like that, so which is sad to see, but unfortunately that's the reality of life today. I will think privately about the sacrifices. My father was one of five brothers overseas during World War II, and I quietly remember. I look at his picture, and um, yeah, we can quietly remember it, and we should do it all year, not just one day of the year. It would definitely like change it in a way that I can't really go out and and uh, remember with along with the other people. But nonetheless, it wouldn't change the value that it has uh, amongst the Canadians. Uh, it's still like a, a personal feeling that you can share uh, virtually as well, even though it's not the best thing. But it's uh, it's definitely something to think about. 
Sadly, maybe people are going to start avoiding crowds like I am and so many people will too. So uh, like my friend said, it'll probably be better if it was virtually for people to watch and still uh, like be able to participate in the Remembrance Day activities. I had to join the Facebook group for my legion that's actually in Point St. Charles, Montreal. And I'll be buying the poppies. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do the trade-off here to pick one up. But I'm doing it online as opposed to going through the subway system and picking one up. Sure. And how about you? How, how's it going to mark, uh, influence how you mark Remembrance Day? Um, it's not because I usually watch the televised version at a national level. So I'm going to keep with that tradition. I think so. I mean, usually on an average day, you know, you're with lots of group of people and there's a you know a collectiveness together of having that moment of silence and you know feeling the palpation of a loud room come to quiet whereas now with everyone socially distanced and separated and you know at home you know maybe that that power of that moment won't have that same effect and so i think it will be changed because of that um, but i think we also have the opportunity to because now most people are working from home to have even a larger celebration collectively together and i think I haven't seen anything, you know, been broadcasted about that or anything out that out there, but I think that could, you know, be a positive for how we remember it. For our next segment, we gave Canadians the opportunity to express their thoughts on those who fought for our freedoms. Our question. What is your message to Canada's war veterans? I'd like them to know that we will never forget what they've done for us, for our country. They died for us. Um, and I, I tell that to my kids all the time, without vets, our country would not be what it is today. Honest to goodness. We have to honor them all. The, like, I don't care if it's COVID or not, we still need to remember them and honor them because without them, Canada would not be what we are today. But uh, just to know that we, we do remember you and, and, and face it, like, in 20 years or 30 years from now that our last of our veterans probably won't be around, we still will be remembering them, even then when we can go back out and that. So just know that at home we're, we're still remembering you and that kind of stuff. We're just doing it privately. I highly respect them and uh, I feel for them. I respect everything that they did. Um, I feel that their fight was um, very serious. I have uh, uncles that fought in wars, in the wars, and in World War II, and I've seen pictures, and it was gruesome. It was hard, and they made it, and I'm very proud of them. Very proud of all the soldiers, and I'm very proud that they went to fight for Canada, and I'd like to thank all of them. Uh, that, that, that thank we, you. <laughs> that we really appreciate the effort that they, the sacrifice they made those all those years ago, and uh, a tremendous job they did on uh, on giving us the the life we have today. And you mentioned that you have family. That's... Yes, yes. Uh, my father um, certainly fought in the Second World War. My great uncle died in the First World War. Um, my parents, of course, lived through World War II, so I, I think uh, uh, about them, uh, and they would find this COVID-19 nothing. I mean, they carried around gas masks for six years, so wearing a little cotton mask, believe me, is nothing. Um, so we're very grateful. Uh, they didn't talk a lot about it. Um, they felt that it was their duty and uh, we're grateful for that and we're sorry that some of the elderly veterans for whom this might be their last remembrance day service uh, don't have the opportunity to be out there and to feel that people are grateful to them oh gosh thank you like i can't imagine your experience and i hope that you have the space to tell your story and that we can get those stories from you and and learn from them in meaningful ways yeah just thank you I'm a younger person, so I maybe don't quite understand everything that they went through. So all I can say is thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't even think that you can put into words the amount of gratitude that I, as being just a young Canadian woman growing up here. Um, I feel like 
just thank you for making my life so much easier and I haven't had to personally deal with anything um, because of them, right? So just a huge thank you. I could never repay anything like that. Um, so I would like to make sure that I'm doing my part to kind of help a little bit here and there um, whenever I can volunteer or help out and things like that. It's, it just kind of opens up your eyes to see how small your world is, but how big it could actually be when reaching out so many people. So just kind of putting it into perspective for yourself. Right. Absolutely. Well, I mean, obviously, I'd like to say thank you, um, but it's it's crazy how much things have changed in such a short period of time. It's crazy to look back at that and think that that really wasn't that long ago. Um, but um, obviously, I would just thank everyone for everything that they've done for us. It gives us the opportunity to live in the world that we do now. And um, hopefully with everything moving forward, uh, we can just keep everything safe again. Uh, I guess thank you for everything you've done for us. Hopefully that Canada will do better in, in uh, I guess, acknowledging them and making sure that they have the support, the help and support that they need. They gave their lives for, uh, for what we have here in Canada and they should be, it should be reflected that way. Thank you. That's my message. Thank you for everything you've done. You know, you've done your fighting and everything else, and I think that our message is that we're proud of them, and we should look up to them. We just won't, we'll never forget what you've done. We'll always be grateful for what you've done. Well, just, I'd like to hope that, you know, they'll have many more years to live, but we know that we're going we're gonna to lose them. So, you know, every year we lose more and more. So we should be making sure that we, we honour them as much as we possibly can. Uh, well... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sacrificing. And possibly even giving up your life and the lives of your, of your friends and family. I don't think that you can say thank you enough. That's it. Thank you. Just thank you for serving our country and uh, we respect and cherish uh, everything you've done for us. Uh, I think it would be cliche, but you know, thank you. You know, th thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for, you know, giving me the opportunity to walk through here in Ottawa and, you know, live freely um, and have all the privileges that I've had in my life. So thank you. I want to thank them. Obviously, we cannot thank them enough. And um, they've done a lot for, uh, for their country. So we cannot do anything uh, as much as thanking them. Especially for, um, I honestly identify as uh, a child of an immigrant. So the chance that my parents had to come here, you know, and establish here and have us here to have a better life, a better education. I guess I can thank them for that. Thanks for your commitment and your service, and I appreciate the freedom that I have today. Canada's men and women in uniform have put themselves in harm's way on our behalf. Many have paid the ultimate price and many more have the physical and mental scars to this day. But do they get the respect they deserve? And what approach should the Trudeau government take? Our question. What more can the federal government do for veterans? Well, first off, they can start taking care of them and spit, instead of giving all a lot of our money away to other countries in the world, they can take care of their veterans first. Trudeau's comment that uh, they're asking for too much is ridiculous and you can check that in the history books too what uh, what he referenced that too so I just don't think they're being taken care of properly I think they can stop sandbagging them every time they go to try to get some benefits and stop you know prolonging the process and and, and in some cases not not even uh, giving them what their what their due diligence is and and that's happening more and more. It's it's ridiculous. That they, they, sh they should not have to fight. This should come natural. They should e she shouldn't even have to ask for it. it. Should be automatic. I think listening to the veterans, finding out specifically what are some of the specific needs they want. I know it's easy for us as outsiders to try and say what it is that they should have, but I think speaking to them directly would be a better solution. Finding out what specifically they need. Uh, I think the federal government should give the veterans more money because. They deserve that as well because they gave, gave their lives. Yeah. I don't know. I think they need to be more recognized than they are. Uh, more so public-wise. There's never anything 
usually there's only negative about the veterans from veterans associations and the government. So I just think the government should do something to recognize it. I think the best thing that government could do is make sure we stay out of any more wars. That would be the best thing for veterans. Oh, well, the thing is, uh, they shouldn't, the fight, veterans shouldn't be having to fight with government for anything. They should be looked after like the, uh, for, for their service. I mean, we should be treating them like kings, I mean, kings and queens for their service. We owe a lot to, the, to, our, to our, our forefathers. I mean, even so much as medical bills. Um, I mean, we do have a great, 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 great healthcare system here in Canada. Um, but even just making sure that there's nothing that they have to worry about after what they've been through to help us be where we are. Um, just making sure that even if it's something, I mean, now 2020 with mental health being such a huge issue, um, helping them with PTSD or anything of that sort. Um, just making sure that they're as comfortable as, as possibly can be. Um, because considering what they did for us to live the life that we live nowadays, um, should not go just kind of be swept under the rug or anything like that. I think we're underserving mainly our veterans and our mental health. Um, there is a I mean, huge crisis of, you know, veterans coming back and, you know, having PTSD, depression, anxiety, and not being able to deal with that. And that doesn't just affect, you know, their day-to-day -day function, but affects their chances of getting employment afterwards. Um, and so I think we need a lot more effort on not only when they come back and supporting them, but, you know, preparing them with coping strategies prior, to, you know, for enjoying the forces and being deployed. And I think we've, you know, we've been failing them, you know, drastically with that. I think they should make sure that they have a proper retirement and proper medical care. Definitely. They should never go hungry. Well, making sure that uh, their health benefits are covered because obviously they're at an age now that uh, a lot of them do probably have a lot of health problems and that kind of thing. And, and making sure that their pensions are covered. These are people that should not at this time in their life be really worried about how their rent's going to be paid and how they're going to have food on the table and, and, and having health insurance and, and, and that kind of stuff. Certainly, the the being brought to task on the after effects for, for young men who are fighting now, that they really do have to look at uh, making sure that they get the services they need when they come back. And that, um, you know, that their quality of life uh, is, is taken care of for all the, the sacrifices that they did do all that oh, for those years. So quality of life would be the best thing that the government needs to step up and make sure that all the veterans receive that. Remembrance Day is not a national holiday. It's a statutory holiday in different parts of the country, but not in Nova Scotia, Quebec, Ontario or Manitoba. Some feel a national holiday on November 11th would diminish its true meaning while other people feel it would give people a better opportunity to remember. So what do you think? Our question. Should Remembrance Day be a national holiday? Having it as a national holiday would, would keep it at the forefront of people's minds and, and maybe, you know, regardless of what the reasons are that they're celebrating it, whether it's just having work off or not, it still keeps it in their memories and, and keeps it relevant. If enough people think that, then sure, I don't have particularly strong feelings one way or another. It should be, yeah. It should be holiday. Because I think it's important to always remember um, what happened in the history so that we don't repeat our mistakes. Definitely should be a national holiday because I know a lot of people that sacrifice their lives and careers and uh, sacrifice themselves for, for Canada, for what we have here, is for our freedoms. Therefore, I think it should be definitely remembered as a national holiday. Well, when I was a kid, we didn't go to school on Remembrance Day, but my dad made us go to the Cenotaph in Toronto. And I, I don't think giving the kids the day off, I think that it's a, a learning thing that they could have in the schools with a Remembrance Day service of some kind. Um, but I don't think the day off is the solution to it. It, it should be done in the school. 100%. I've got relatives that served. Um, it's just a great day for, again, families to recognize the people in their past, the people that have set, set them up to where we are now, and um, why not take the time? I think it definitely should be a national holiday. 
to to make people aware of those people that have gone before, definitely. It should be a national holiday because those who gave our lives deserve that. Yes. Why? Because it's Remembrance Day. It's remembering all, all of the veterans that went before us. My grandfather, one of them, and uh, it should be a national holiday. I think it should be. It's an important day. Um, I mean, Remembrance Day certainly puts our veterans in perspective, and uh, I think, you know, they gave a lot of their lives for us, and we can give one day a year back to them, so. Uh, it gives people time to uh, reflect on uh, the people that have died for us. Definitely. I mean, the, the sacrifice that our, our parents, you know, put up for us to have this kind of freedom. Of course, it should be a national holiday. No question about it. I like the idea of it being an holiday. I, I come from the UK, it was always Remembrance Sunday. It was always the closest Sunday to, have you seen the things on the TV with the Queen at the Cenotaph and stuff? But uh, I like it being on the actual day. And I think a lot of people, when they get in work, get caught up with work and therefore, by the time the 11 o'clock thing com comes around and the actual time, people miss it. I think if you've got the day off, I think there's more chance of you doing the right thing by the guys that did the right thing for us. Yes, I think it should be because it's a very important day. It, uh, res it shows respect for the people who went to war for us for our, to, to gain freedom for our generations and uh, we owe them so much. Yes, definitely should be. Absolutely. Laid the foundation for us to do what we do as a country and as citizens of Canada. Um, absolutely, I do. I, I think it should be a holiday for sure. I mean, I think that's a, it's a nuanced question. I think we definitely have a celebrations around the country. Whether if, you know, time should be off dedicated for the remembering of our past, I think that's not an, an unreasonable suggestion. I think... Um, there's a lot of discussion about Canadian history that needs to be happened, both in the positive and the negative. And I think having a designated day during the year, whether that's Remembrance Day or not, I think would be quite valuable. Yeah, I would agree so. Why? Um, well, it would, we could reflect on it more um, because, like, honestly, I don't reflect on it enough. And so having it, um, like, as a, as a holiday would help us reflect more. Thanks for watching this episode of Outburst on the Cable Public Affairs channel. I'm Glenn McGuinness. If you have any comments about this show or any other show, you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. It's your turn to speak up, and we're listening. <music>